Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Today, my guest is Marlene McConnell. She's an author, speaker, podcast host, self-love teacher, and trauma survivor. She is from Cape Town, South Africa, and we're talking about her new book today. It's Ray of Light, The Healing Path to Step Out of Trauma into Joy and Inner Peace, and you can find it available at Amazon. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's lovely to have you. Thank you, Nicole. It's such an honor to be here. I'm very excited for the conversation. (laughs) I'm excited as well. You are truly an inspiration with your story. So talk about what inspired you to write your book. Where do I start? Let's start. <laughs> let's start the closest to where we are today. Wonderful. I am a, a cancer survivor, and I can proudly say that I've been four years in remission. So, um, so four years ago, when I was diagnosed, I went through all of the cancer treatments, and what happened? My my oncologist would say, "Why do you look, don't look like a cancer patient? Why <laughs> is it that you look?" Um, at peace with all of this how are you going through this and I said well I don't know you know I guess I have a story and he said can you please share this with the other patients and so I started speaking at the um, support groups and that was how it started I started speaking about my journey and how I navigated um, cancer and the treatments and what was interesting for me was that my story did not ever only resonate with the actual cancer patients, but it also resonated with the allies, the family members, the friends that came along to support them. And, you know, when we would get feedback afterward, you know, they would, people would say to me, Marlene, you know, I'm going through a custody battle, but I've never had cancer, but your message, it's really inspired me to do better or to sort this out. You know, Marlene, I'm going through a divorce and your message has really inspired me. And the next day I would get email from the social worker asking me for all of the questions, answers to all of the (laughs) questions that the group would have. And I would end up writing these emails and people would say, what was in your burner um, when you were meditating or praying? And, you know, I'd say, okay, it's lavender. You can find it at this shop. And sure. eventually I thought, you know, there must be a better way. And so in 2020, uh, December, I took my dog out in the middle of the night and he wanted to go for his wee. And as he squatted (laughs) down, the little man, I thought I'll give him some privacy And as I looked up, I looked up into the face of a beautiful, beautiful barn owl. And it was just gliding quietly overhead. And I watched this owl as it just glided over this three-story building. And it was a full moon. So it was against the backdrop of this beautiful full moon. And I just had this, this feeling that I needed to own my story, which is something that I've never done before. And... From there, I really, I, I I tried to divert from it, but the intuition and the pull was so strong that I, I, I was inspired to start my podcast and then immediately after to write my book. Yeah. And your book is extremely relatable. I would agree that even though I haven't had cancer myself, just hearing your story of hope and and uh, survival is one that we all can relate to because we all have something that we've gone through. But cancer isn't the only thing that you've been through in your life. Talk a little bit about that. That's right. Um, so when I was um, a young student, I was um, working at a restaurant. And at the restaurant, you know, I was in a meeting just discussing the final stages of the season. And so for us here in South Africa, February is the end of season or January, February is the end of season. And that's also the end of our summertime. And so after the meeting, I had to return to um, work an evening shift. And I decided that I, instead of going, um, staying at the restaurant, I was going to go home. And so I got into my car, which my parents bought me for my birthday. I had the wind blowing in my hair and I drove home. And as I was driving, I, I remember feeling my intuition saying, turn around. Mm. And I thought, 
and I'm going to give my age away, Nicole. So, <laughs> my, so I have this car and I'm thinking I should really get seat covers, you know, because I don't want the seats to be dirty. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know, you should really, really turn around and get the seat covers, go back to the mall. But then I don't do this. And there are so many side roads. And as I'm driving, I, I pass all of these side roads and I power through all along having this feeling that I should be turning around. Mm. And when I came to my apartment, as I walked in, I was not the only one that entered my apartment. There was someone else that entered my apartment. I ran up the stairs. I threw my bag down. And as I came out to the landing, someone grabbed me from behind and put something cold against my neck. And in that moment, it was something that I didn't quite understand. You, your mind tries to make sense of it. Sure. You know, you think, oh, who's playing this prank on me? Who is this? What, what is this joke? Right. But soon I realized it was no joke. Right. And we cleared the apartment, went downstairs. And all the long, I tried to think, you know, how do I escape this? How can I get out of this? I remember fight seeing, flight, right? Yes. Yeah, fight or flight. I mean, you know, I remember seeing um, uh, notifications on television saying that, you know, you can, if you buy this package and you knock the phone off the hook, then it'll dial the police. And I'm thinking, oh, why didn't I get that? <laughs> um, you know, and I'm passing the, the the front door where I just put the key down minutes ago. And I'm thinking, can I can I grab this key? Um, but then at the risk of having my throat slit, I thought maybe not. And so instinctively, you know, and uh, I complied. And and the moment we got back upstairs, everything started. Uh, I didn't know why, but I was beaten. I was raped. I was strangled and I was left for dead. Passersby had, um, you know, called the police and um, there was a captain that was in the area on his patrol. And I would later come to know him as a very dedicated police officer. <clears throat> and he was, he took the call and he immediately came rushing through um, along with the paramedics and who revived me. And, you know, I remember looking up at him. He had the most beautiful blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And behind those eyes, were a lot of questions and just asking me everything and that was my opportunity to really start speaking about what had happened it was the first time when I had to think about it relive it and speak and by the time the uh, paramedics had taken me to the hospital um, I heard my uh, the familiar voice that I heard in the apartment earlier I heard the voice come in and say you know three arrests have been made Wow. And they're here for processing the same way I was being processed. My body was being processed by the district surgeon, you know, at the at the hospital. So um, really, there was no rhyme or reason as to why this happened to you. It was a random act, right? Of cr a random crime. It was a random crime. Um, they, the perpetrators planned a break-in. It just mm -hmm. happened that I came home at that time and that this was a break-in. And so, you know, I walked into this home invasion. Um, and yeah, so I guess, you know, um, it, my intuition did try to warn me, turn around, go get those seat covers, mm -hmm. don't go there. And, you know, I think, you know, when you in hindsight, and it took a long time to work through that, because sure. you beat yourself up so many times thinking about how many opportunities you had to avoid that in your life. Right. And the truth is that, you know, in life, not many of us, you know, will ever not have a difficult time in our life or, or even leave unscathed. Right. And, 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 you know, it was coming to terms with the fact that um, there was not much that I could have done, right, right. you know, it had happened right. and I, I made choices that day. I powered through and I had to forgive myself for that. I had to say, Marlene, it's okay, but what can you take from this situation? Yes. Don't let and, them steal your joy, your life, what you have to give back because you had so much to offer. And in that instance, those terrible people could have taken that away from you. Instead, you flipped it, I'm sure with hard work and 
Perseverance, yeah. getting through that to say, you won't take this from me. And in the same time, I will help others learn from it. And that's what really your book is all about. Yes. Yes. So my book, um, Ray of Light, essentially, it you know, the the book talks about my story and it's a compilation of not only mine, um, but also those of others, because I love to tell the stories of hope of people that I've met along the way in primary and secondary interviews. But it's also backed up with research that shows us that, you know, um, there's reason and method behind the things that we do. Yeah. And I, in my book, I, I, I describe my experience. But at the same time, I also say that all of the things that we can experience, like post-traumatic growth, like me writing this book and having this podcast, that is growth beyond any traumatic experience. But it doesn't come, you know, um, as a free handout. The years and the days that followed that attack on my life, having survived uh, an attempted murder and a brutal rape was, was difficult, you know, and I had to really sit in my misery and work through so much and in those initial years, it was easier just to succumb to negative emotions because we don't understand it, you know? We don't understand what happens to our body. Uh, in those initial years, I had to teach myself how to feel safe, how to feel safe in my home, how to feel safe in the center of a room, um, because I constantly feared so much that someone would grab me. Sure. And, you know, it, um, I started with talk therapy as a means of, um, you know, um, work. Uh, and I had a, a, a psychologist that helped me to understand not only what had happened at the time, but also what the impact was for me on a day-to-day -day basis. So it wasn't necessary for me in talk therapy to relive the experience on a constant basis, but it was how did it affect my life at that time? And at that time, I couldn't sleep. I was terrified to stand in the middle of a room. Sure. I was having trouble at university. I couldn't study. I I had issues with, um, you know, my social interactions. Um, I had trouble fitting back into a life that I felt no longer belonged to me because I disassociated so much with the world and with who I was. It I was really understandable, though, because... I think we would all feel that way if we went through what you went through. The hard work is figuring out how to get back to a place where you are good again and that doesn't keep you from being your true self and having your purpose in life. Yes, yes. And I think for me, the key there was forgiveness. Mm, you know, when I. Hard. That's when, hard to forgive, it's, it's but you have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive others. Right. And the way that I did that, Nicole, was I had to I had to start seeing people as I had to start seeing the perpetrators and the villains in my life as people, as real people that also experienced a traumatic event that also had this instigating event um, infiltrate their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Because as much as I was feeling my suffering, my loved ones were feeling their suffering, but it was the same the other way. There were so many lives ruined on that day. And once I did that, I was able to come to a place of forgiveness, not only for myself to say there was nothing that you could have done and forgive yourself for the things you didn't do, um, but also to say, you know, I no longer want to be held captive to this event in my life. I would like to say that I can take what I have learned and I can share it with the world. I can transmute it into something positive. Mm -hmm. And I can share this in, in a positive light and tell people that through forgiveness, through surrender, through the power of my choices, you know, through having the courage to surrender to a higher power in my life, um, you know, I was able to get through this. Connecting is that yourself. part of the lesson learned on this path of healing? Is that yes. part of the lessons learned, right? Yes, definitely. And in my book, I I structured the book in such a way that each chapter is a lesson that I've learned. And so what my book has 10 chapters. And in each chapter, you see a glimpse into my life as I tell my story, but also I share the stories of others that are relevant to that chapter. Yeah. So is it how did that you found hope in all of this? 
my hope that I found came much later in life when when I had to choose my life, when I had to choose to live after my cancer diagnosis. And that meant that where I found myself in my life, I had attracted so many negative emotions. I wanted to transmute it into something positive. But that meant that I had to make difficult decisions. I had to leave toxic relationships. I had to end friendships. I had to learn how to set clear boundaries. And that was very difficult, especially if you're in a codependent relationship, which is what I was at the time. And so the way that I cultivated hope for myself was to start doing the small things because my self-worth was so low. I didn't think that, you know, anything was possible beyond that life that I lived. And so I would do small things like I would take a different route home from work. And it sounds so silly, but no, it doesn't it's, actually, you know, it was me taking control of my life and I was breaking the routine that I was in. Um, in that I love that. I love that you're saying do the small things. I think that's something we often forget. We have to just have this big, you know, PowerPoint presentation of how we're supposed to change our life and just, yeah. do a, you know, a 360 and do everything differently. But that makes total sense to me to do the small things, to take control of your life even if it means changing the way you go home from the grocery store, taking a different path on your walk. I love that. That that really just resonated with me. Thank you for sharing that. Great. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Yes. And, you know, at the time, my eating was quite restricted in the sense that, you know, the partner I was with would do the cooking. And so I had to eat what was put in front of me. And something that was really, really liberating was I chose what I ate. And so if I felt like pizza or <laughs> pasta, I would get that and I would savor every bite. Again, something so small, but I took my power back because I said no thank you to something that I was forced to, to eat and I made my own choice and I took action. I bought the pizza and I followed through by savoring it. And so that was how I took my power back. Small, excuse the pun, bites at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. You know, I think oftentimes if you were speaking of the relationship, you might do things because you just want to make it easier, want to get along. But at the same time, that's really not healthy. What's healthy is for you to say, hey, I'm going to have the pizza. You can have something else. And this is how we'll do it because you you have to be true to yourself. If you're constantly trying to change something for someone else, that's not healthy. And you did that. And that's that's very profound, just something as small as that. So yeah. gosh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. And that's what people will see and read in your book, correct? Absolutely. And that was what gave me hope. And once I had hope, I could, I'd hope for tomorrow. I would hope that I, I could do this. And then I started taking action. And the action was I, I went to, and I looked at an apartment, an apartment that I would never even live in. But I went there, I called an agent, I went, I looked at the apartment. And, you know, I had taken action. And so the next time when I went and I looked at an apartment, I could sign the lease. Sure. And so that's why I say, you know, the small things make the big things palatable. And it, and that's how I cultivated hope. And the hope in my life gave me courage. Mm. And once I had courage, I could take action. Yeah. And, and you, and you took it and you wrote this beautiful book. So as we close the main takeaways from your book and your life, I would say that we have that ray of light within us. Everything that we need in this world, we already have. And sometimes we feel when we are in the depths of despair that we cannot see that light. We don't know the way out. We can't see how tomorrow can be any better. But, but when that happens, there will always be someone else that will shine their light for you. It'll be someone that'll come alongside you, even if they don't have anything to say, maybe in silence, if you've lost someone and you're grieving. It could be that someone will come and be that shoulder to cry on or give you that kind word or a stranger giving you that smile. 
But there will always be someone that will shine that ray of light for you. And in my book, I think you will find that path um, to step out of your trauma. It is possible and it does exist. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged. I see you today as a great encourager. And we have a lot to learn from your story because you give us hope that Whatever is going on, we can persevere as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed our conversation. And Marlene, what's the best way for folks to uh, learn more about you? And of course, you can get your book on Amazon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So my uh, website is www.mycenteredlife.com because I believe that if you are centered and balanced, you can live the life of your dreams. And so um, on my website, I have a resources page with a meditation that I've curated um, for my following and also for your listeners and also some journal prompts. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at My Centered Life. Fantastic. Well, I will be following you. I plan to get your book and I have really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. It has. I would agree with that 100%. And that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.